Welcome to the Bouldering Progression Series. These videos are designed to help guide you through your journey and development as a climber on the bouldering walls. The series is split into several parts, with each part addressing a certain stage in your bouldering skill level. We'll go over the requirements needed to competently climb a specific grade range. This third video will cover the skills needed to climb V4s and soft V5s. We're now entering the grade tier where technique, problem solving, and fitness are all very evenly balanced. Having a good blend of the three is crucial for maximizing your chances of sending. We'll address the fitness component in a future video and focus this one on climbing technique and sequencing. One of the most fundamental footwork techniques, foot swaps allow you to switch out one foot for another. This is usually done on a foothold that is too small to fit the points of both feet simultaneously. Set up for the foot swap by first establishing a comfortable and static body position. Place the tip of the foot you're swapping to over the tip of the foot that is currently on the hold. The top foot should be resting with light pressure on the bottom foot. Now switch them out by removing the bottom foot. The pressure of the top foot and its close proximity to the hold should let it naturally and quickly slide into position. The main reason we use the foot swap is to position the body into the opposite hand and foot orientation. Pairing left hand with right foot or right hand with left foot generally establishes a more stable body position than using same side hand and foot, which creates the barn door effect. If you're unfamiliar with the principle of opposite hand and foot, feel free to watch my video, The First Rule of Climbing. Here on this blue V4, you can see that I used the foot swap once to pair my left foot with my right hand, and once to pair my right foot with my left hand. Here, Jian Kim, one of the most technical pro climbers, uses it to reposition her left foot with her right hand, so she can comfortably reach the next move using her left hand. Some people are not overly fond of foot swaps because it can take time and precious energy to execute. Instead, they opt for a more flow-based method and will use the technique called stepping through. This is the feet equivalent of the cross move that is done with the hands. If the next foothold you're going to isn't too out of reach, you can simply step your leg through the leg that is currently on the foothold. This is usually done on the inside of the established leg, but you can get fancy and step behind too. Here on this orange V4, I used the step through to access the next foothold with my left foot instead of opting for a foot swap on the previous foothold. The heel hook is a footwork technique that makes everyone feel slightly badass the first time they do it. The climber uses the heel as if it were a third hand to stabilize an existing position or even to assist in pulling towards the next hold. There are a few considerations when it comes to using this technique. Orientation of the hold. Just like with positioning hands on handholds, we need to position the heel so that it is in line with the hold's orientation. This means that our shins are perpendicular with the pulling or hooking side of the hold. This will maximize the leverage gain from the heel hook. Height of the hold. The height of the hold will determine how effectively you can pull it with your heel. A hold that is too high will serve more as a passive heel hook used to stabilize a position. Here you can see Jian using a hold that is head height to rest and chalk up. Holds that are lower give you a better angle to leverage your posterior chain and actively pull with the heel. Anything that is around hip height is optimal to fully engage the heel. However, be careful when pulling too hard as this could lead to injury. One of the fun aspects about indoor bouldering is that problems can be set with movements that you would never find outdoors. If you've ever seen competition climbing, you'll notice that some of the moves are quite acrobatic in nature and require timing and coordination. A common example is the running step up. The starting holds of the boulder are too high and you must use only footholds to step up to reach them. This can't be done statically since the wall is vertical and the footholds are impossible to stand on alone. The only solution is to use a running start. There are a few factors to help you succeed with this move. One, 
You need enough forward momentum so that when you step up, your body is still moving towards the wall. Many people tend to slow down and as a result are already falling away from the wall when they stand up. 2. You want to time the grabbing of the hold to occur as your body is in a floating state. This means calibrating your forward momentum so that as you stand up, you're also decelerating. Latch the hold while your body is in that brief moment of not moving forwards or backwards. A second type of timing move is the dyno. In its simplest form, it's the coordination of winding up, pulling and jumping, releasing a hold, and catching a hold. Many climbers shy away from dynos because it's a high commitment move where you let go of all your contact points on the wall. However, training the skill in a safe environment can be quite fun. There are a lot of different types of dynos, but they all share the same basic principles. 1. Winding up by compressing in the direction opposite of the target hold. 2. Using the pull to keep you close to the wall. 3. Exploding off your feet at the moment of release. And 4. Latching the target hold with conviction. If you want to learn more about dynamic moves, you can watch my video, Where Does Power Come From? here. The last climbing technique we'll cover in this video is flagging. This is where the climber stabilizes a body position by extending a leg out without placing the foot on a foothold. Flagging goes hand in hand with foot swaps because it occurs commonly in situations where we are only utilizing one foot to move from. The two most common types of flags include the outside flag and the back flag. The outside flag, or just plain old flag, is used the most frequently as it offers secure and stable positioning. This is due to the flag being done with the climber positioned in opposite hand and foot. The handhold and foothold used are approximately on the same vertical plane. The back flag is a distinct variation that involves the climber using the same side hand and foot. While this breaks the rule of opposite hand and foot, there are some situations where this is a more efficient technique than using an outside flag. The handhold and foothold used, again, are typically on the same vertical plane. But for back flags, you can have footholds located farther outside than the handhold. Let's take a look at the top half of this blue V4, where both outside flags and back flags are used. In this instance, you can see that the foothold is too far outside the handhold for me to swap feet and use an outside flag. Therefore, I use a back flag to establish position. The holds on the rest of the route are aligned fairly well on the same vertical plane, which lets me use outside flags to finish the route. I made a whole video that explains flagging in detail. You can check it out here. As you enter the intermediate grades, climbing becomes a bit more thoughtful. You'll need to tap into the problem-solving part of your brain and develop a knack for sequencing. Finding your own beta is often a subjective endeavor, but there are a few general principles to keep in mind. 1. Work backwards. Look for keyholds that act as checkpoints on the route. 2. Pair footholds with handholds. Think about ideal body positions. 3. Utilize angles to your advantage. Opt for handholds that have a better pulling position. Let's take a look at a few problems and see how these principles can be applied. For this blue V5, at first glance it looks like a problem that can be climbed straight up with hips square. There are lots of big footholds and handholds that form a pretty straight vertical line. However, once you factor the angles of the holds and the steepness of the route, it may be better to utilize some side pulling techniques that involve hip in climbing. Next, we search for the feet to go with the hands. Despite having this tempting donut to use for my right foot, I opt for a higher foot that is positioned perfectly to use in conjunction with this slightly sideways pulling hold. Because I want the most stable position possible, I will use opposite hand and foot, outside flagging with my free leg. We encounter a very similar scenario on the very next moves. For this yellow V5, we see a long string of handholds used in a traversing fashion. Traverses can be a bit tricky at times because it's hard to pinpoint which hold should be used by which hand. So let's first simplify the problem by working backwards and identifying some checkpoints. Right off the bat, I can find three checkpoint holds. These are holds that have a clear intended hand, 
based on where they're positioned along the route. The first is the penultimate hold. From where it's placed on the route, you can tell that it's intended for the right hand so that you can top out with the left hand. The next checkpoint is this hold that is also for the right hand. The right facing angle of the pulling edge and the fact that it is too far from the previous hold to cross into with the left hand all support the argument that it should be used with the right hand. A very similar configuration of holds just beneath that marks another checkpoint intended for the right hand. The trickiest checkpoint hold to identify on this problem is this one. Looking at it, it seems like a good candidate for the left hand. But if you visualize the move leading into this hold, it tells a slightly different story. We can be fairly certain that the hold underneath this is for the left hand. So all I have to do is bump the left hand, right? Except when you think about the span you'll have to cover, and the fact that your right hand is in a slightly gastone position, this tremendous bump doesn't seem so straightforward anymore. It's much easier to use the option of crossing with the right hand. This conveniently lets me cross again with the left hand and arrive at my other checkpoint hold with the correct hand. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. There is a lot of information covered and I hope you can find opportunities to experience these techniques on the wall yourself. For me, breaking into V4s was a big milestone as the problem seemed a lot more physically and technically demanding. Despite the hiccups this year has brought, I hope you continue to find the motivation to climb, train, and progress. Until next time, move better, climb harder.